All right, all right, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? I did say when I got this game, I would go through my own personal process of how I learn a game, how I learn a fighting game character, to see if maybe it might help some other people with their own problems, with their, you know, issues that they have on their own. Um, you know, maybe it's all, it's all a very simple thing. Like, I can't really stress enough how much, like, just experience and playing has to do this. So this is more about how to properly accumulate the knowledge you need in order to be able to just go into um, matches and start getting that experience. So the very first thing I did, the very first thing you gotta do, obviously, the, a lot of games now, I think the majority of them, I don't really, I can't think of any recent fighting games that I've played myself, that don't have this kind of thing where it, it doesn't have anything to do with a specific character. This is all universal game mechanic stuff. This one has a lot of that 60. It's a lot of stuff, and I'm actually gonna go through it myself in a while because I need I need an updating of my own for Persona 4 Arena. I'm still I just I jumped right into it uh, without really like readjusting myself to the buttons and all that. And so a lot of the times, like I mean to do sweep and I'll accidentally do the, the, the DP. Or I'll mean to throw and I accidentally do a hop. Like, I'm pressing the incorrect buttons a lot. So I need to go through a refresher course of my own. But that's the first thing you want to do. Before you can learn a character, you got to at least know the basics of the game. So a lot of things have this. Or maybe it might just be listed in a manual. Whatever. There will be a listing of universal game mechanics that every single character has in the game. So stuff like the aforementioned roll, short hop, DP, uh, they call it, I believe, a furious action or vile action. I think his is called, uh, Ken's is called vile action. I don't know why, That's but that's what it is. Like, when you hit his challenge mode, that's his very first challenge that says vile action. So anyway, uh, you know, there's a bunch of universal things that you gotta learn first. So once I have learned the universal stuff that is in a game, once I know the game mechanics, understand them, I hop into training mode, and the first thing I do is I learn Welcome how does my Zelda character world. use up, these Mario. universal it's mechanics that I just well. learned about. So, you know, it fl fl everything flows together. Um, so things like dashing would be something you would want to... Uh, unfortunately, loading screens are ruining the moment. But so, like, the very first thing I will do, I will test out movement. How fast does this character walk? How fast does this character dash? What's his jump like? So as you can see, Ken doesn't really have any particularly, does not very fast, not very slow. Just pretty average movement. Back dash, he actually gets a pretty decent amount of distance on his back dash. Forward dash, not very good, but he picks up speed. Then you want to test the jump. Super jump. Air dashes, as you can see, Ken's air dash actually isn't all that. Isn't all that great, his back dash is pretty pretty eh, but then you can get some good momentum there. So then after you understand this stuff, the universal game is game. This is roll. This is hot. Uh, like you said before, that's... Oh, that's right. That's... No, this is all. This is called all I I haven't tested any combos with that. I haven't tried any of that, so I don't actually know what to do off of that. Um, but that kind of stuff. You learn their universal things, so the vial action. Learn the hitbox on it. Learn what happens if you whiff it. As you can see, if you whiff it, you're you're basically allowing the person about a minute to plan out what they want to do to you. You're, you're giving them. Ken's a very polite individual, I guess, and he just says, you know, ah, you know, that was a risk. It was a poor. It was a poor, thought, poorly thought out process on my part. Plan out your move and maximize this kill. Don't you know? You don't only have. 10 frames to punish or 15. You got you got as long as you take what take the time you need to blow me up. That's what I just learned about this dude. Now another thing that would actually that fits this very appropriately. Ken's throws are actually unique. His forward throw, which you would usually do by either not moving the stick in any direction or full, just holding forward, throws him to the other side. That's very rare. And then his back throw actually keeps them on the same side. So that's something that he's taken a universal mechanic and kind of twisted it around on its head. That's not something that most uh, fighting game characters do. Generally, if you do a forward throw, it keeps you, it keeps the opponent in front of you. If you do a back throw, it puts them behind you. He reverses that process. Um, and then you want to start working on the normals. So, like, again, another universal mechanic. What is Ken's auto Go so by just mash the A button over and over. What do I get out of that? Because, like, every single character, that one, 5AA, that is a unique move inaccessible otherwise you just, that is all you can do actually i believe all three of these 
Koromaru's attack is not included in there, but that third slash, that third spear slash is also unique to Ken, but the caveat there is that you get the Koromaru attack in there, so you make him temporarily unavailable on his own. So yeah, that, that's something you gotta worry about. This is all, so you, you're, you should be in analyzation mode right now. So then, another thing. Do these moves get me? Can I just mash this and it'll combo into itself? The answer for Ken, no. I can't even do 2A, 5A. So that's one of the first things I learned. You cannot do that. It won't combo. I believe it combos on counter hit, but I'm too lazy to go to mode change and counter hit and set all that stuff up. Second thing you want to check after, you know, you learn all your moves. I'm not going to go through every single move because this is not a character tutorial. It's just how you learn a character. Uh, second thing you want to learn. Properties on moves. Well, continued properties on moves, like I said. So first you learn the moves hitboxes, then you learn, okay, what can I Gatling out of these moves into other ones? So for instance, I can Gatling from 2B into 5B, then I can special cancel 5B, I can special cancel 2B. This is all stuff that is important uh, for being able to do your own combos. But then you have this kind of stuff where on hit, that is jump cancelable, and I believe it is not jump cancelable on... I want to say, yeah, so you can't, as you can see, I just immediately start holding up, so you can't jump cancel this on block, I just sent Koromaru away because I hit the wrong button. <laughs> but, so this is stuff that you would want to learn, this is all stuff that you would want to learn. Uh, learn what's jump cancelable on moves, learn what you can Gatling into, etc, uh, etc, et all that stuff. So, move properties, how safe the moves are, so for instance, Oops, that was the wrong button again. His 5B is actually, look at that on whiff, looks very, very unsafe because he does that spear twirl at the end of it. And so that's all frames where he is vulnerable. Versus, you know, like if I do this, I can block the entire time while Koromaru is doing his business. So that allows me to remain safe. You want to see what's safe, what isn't, what kind of block strings you could use. Uh, and then you get into special moves. Special moves not nearly as... Uh, important to really learn about because every single let's just go let's go hit up this business challenge mode challenge mode is where I would go to next after learning all the properties of the moves learning what they look like uh, just getting a general feel for the character and their options you head over to challenge mode now challenge mode the reason why I said learning uh, as you can see I've already been here learning um, special moves isn't all that vital you do get more time with them, but almost every single challenge mode that I am aware of runs you through a character's special moves and then their super moves before it gets into like basic combos. And this one's no different. The first 10 trials are all, um... So for instance, this one, first thing that has experience, action, whatever. This is new. I don't know how exactly that works. I don't really know, I don't really, I'll freely admit, I don't particularly understand. Um, can you do that with other up I'm testing this out myself right now, you can't do that with other buttons, it's only here. Alright, so yeah, but as you can see, this is teaching me my special moves. This is why I come to challenge mode next. You learn your basic... This gives you an idea. Let's head over to 11, where we actually, this is just an auto mode. Um, but I apparently was not mad hard. So you learn basic things, uh, basic combos, but don't take, you know, never take this if you're new to fighting games. Never, I don't know why I'm actually focused on talking, bro. Never treat this as, like, these are all the combos this character has. I have already discovered combos myself that I believe, let me just go through and let me look at the moveset, all this stuff right here, that I, but I'm fairly certain that none of this actually, like I've already discovered a combo chain which seems more ideal than anything I can remember seeing here. And I'm just looking at the moveset to see if that is correct or not. Number 21. So this one actually does kind of teach you uh, this thing where you do sweep into into his uh, meter usage charge thrust, which pulls them back. Then you use crouch B and you do an aerial combo off pulling them back. But you can do. Cool. I guess I should look at the rest of them. 
before I say officially that they don't do it, there's not enough attacks in that one. Oh wait, does this teach you it? Not really, let me do a demonstration here just to see. But it's kind of similar, but not completely. So like, for instance, a very easy combo. Oops, fucked up immediately. But you can do that, and then Core Maru goes along and you can pull them back like that. Well, I didn't actually want to do that. You pull them back. And then you can do Crouching B into an aerial combo off of that, and you get new options, which is not, that's something that already I've seen does more damage. So let me just check and see whether, how, how this one, yeah. So none of these have this combo. Um, so never treat a challenge mode as like, this is what a character is capable of, and they obviously, they're the developers of the game, they know the best combos, that is very untrue. It is very, very rare that you see a challenge mode combo end up actually being uh, a character's true bread and butter, you know, something you're gonna pull out in every single match. So treat this as kind of like, it's teaching you what Gatling's into what, what combos into what, but there's still room for improvement, still room for innovation. So, for what I do here, as you can see, I stopped once I got to this one, because this one, I could actually probably do now that I am more well versed, but I kept screwing up the jump down B into fire breath. Um, and so, but once I hit a point, like you saw the rest of these, these are all pretty involved combos. Once I hit a point where it starts requiring muscle memory, versus just, okay, I can do these and I can learn something about the character, I peace out, I'm gone. Because you may end up developing muscle memory that you don't want to apply later on in your game. And muscle memory is a very, very difficult thing to overwrite when you're trying to uh, do other things in fighting games. Muscle memory is just a very, you know, it's how you learned how to do it. In the heat of an actual match, you can't sit there and, like, plan out every single move you want to do. That's why sitting down and learning combos is so important outside of matches. Because otherwise, you're going to be stumbling through it, you're not going to be sure what to do next, and you have to be sure. But once you get that muscle memory set in, it's very difficult to overwrite it with something better later on down the road. So that's why I stop before it gets to a point where I start doing a lot of repetition, where I start screwing up the combos enough that it gets ingrained in my mind that following this move, I should do this move. Um, and then once I'm done with that, you can either head on back to training mode, uh, and start working on things, you know, start testing things yourself. This is where, you know, the more the more involved you get, the more divergent all the various paths you can take are, or like, what you do for your learning process. Like, I know at this point, a lot of people will just have gone online and looked things up, whether they look up videos um, of people better than them using the character to see what they do, uh, or they hit online resources like Dustloop to see combo, you know, what combos people have already come up with so they don't have to find that stuff out themselves, all that kind of stuff. But inevitably, before I get into matches, I always want to head over here and hit like arcade mode or something to this effect where you can play against an active, uh, moving opponent and you can start working on your neutral. You can start doing things. Just start fighting. You learn your defensive options better, obviously, against something that's actually doing something. And you also get to, you know, learn what moves are effective in which situations. You shouldn't do too much of it. Because obviously AI will never match up to the capabilities of a human opponent. Um, and so, you know, like, and the higher you get in difficulty, the more it's just about, like, they're reading your inputs and reacting, you know, perfectly 80% of the time to those inputs rather than um, them actually reacting to things that you're doing. So it can be bad to sit and play against the CPU for too long. Because you start thinking things are viable that really wouldn't work against an actual opponent, but it just happens to work against, like, it finds a flaw in the AI that, you know, you won't find in a human opponent. Versus, you know, you might dismiss a lot of things that they don't seem effective, but that's because a computer doesn't have the required reaction time that a human does. And so, you can kind of, you can develop bad habits for fighting against the CPU too often. But it's still something that you should do just so you can fight a moving opponent and get a feel of it. And then you start moving into real matches against real people. And, you know, then you just start losing. 
and eventually you learn enough through those losses that you stop losing so much, and eventually your win rate just gets better and better. Um, so anyway, that's how I learn a fighting game character. It's mostly just about learning the basics, and then at that point, once you have the basics down, it's just experience, just constant experience, applying new things, uh, you know, learning what, however you figure out new things for your character to apply to your game, finding those and starting to apply them. But the majority of it is all really just putting in the time and playing more. So I hope this helps somebody somewhere. And uh, eventually, once I am not completely ass at this game, I will start actually playing matches.